Good morning, my neighbours! Ladies and gents, it's Monday, and it's time for an alternative paper review. Now, normally I would talk about what's on the front page of one of the right-wing rags, you know, and then roast it, rip it, pull it to pieces, show up the hypocrisy of the Tories and their cheerleaders in the sun, the Telegraph, the Express, the Mail. You get the idea. You guys have been on here on this journey with me for long enough to know the drill. But today I want to ask you a question, all right? Who do you think is the most powerful person? Or oh, man, let's be real. <laughs> Who is the most powerful man in media? these days. Do you think it's, uh, I guess you could say Elon Musk, because he owns Twitter and Twitter fuels and feeds so much of the news ecosystem? Could be Elon. Or do you go traditional and you say Rupert Murdoch, because he owns so many TV stations, newspapers, etc, etc. Could it be Elon? Could it be Rupert Murdoch? I'm going to blow your mind. I think it's actually Eamon Holmes. Because if reports are to be believed, Eamon Holmes' marriage of like 25 years or something collapsed earlier this year when Ruth Langsford found messages on his phone between him and another woman, guys. Oh, Lord. No, 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 no. I could never imagine that. No, not an aging TV news anchor cheating on his wife. For a younger woman, that, uh, that would never happen. Now, for those of you immune to sarcasm, infidelity in the news industry is basically at pandemic levels. Through a mixture of long hours and high pressure and being sent away to stay in hotels overnight. And then add in a little sprinkle of fame and adulation from people, although, you know, weird people. I don't know who would categorise themselves as a fan of a news anchor. But anyway, my point is, you could broadly see that there is a a bit of a problem in that world. Now, most of the time, if it's not morally okay, it is at least consensual. Although on occasion you get people like Bill O'Reilly, infamous Fox News anchor who settled out of court for 30 odd million dollars. And nobody knows what he did to that staff member. Nobody's talking about it for 30 million dollars. Anyway, get back to the point, Aid. Why is Eamon Holmes so powerful? Well, if you look at the dynamic of this love split, of this marriage's collapse, like what are the pinch points of it, right? She finds text messages on his phone. She is his loving, dedicated wife of decades. She finds these messages. The marriage collapses. Has there been infidelity there? Is he a love rat? If this was the dynamic, if you took this and wrapped it around a footballer and his wife, and he's getting messages from like, a hairdresser somewhere. It'd be all over the papers. They'd be calling him a love rat, a cheat. He wouldn't be on TV, he wouldn't be offered any contracts. But yeah, just look at the coverage that Eamon Holmes is getting. Eamon Holmes says he is not okay after Ruth Langsford split. Oh dear, dear oh dear, that is, that is difficult to hear. I, I certainly hope there's somebody around him that can comfort him through these difficult times. Eamon is comforted by marriage counsellor. Oh! Oh, okay. Well, that is... That is positive, I suppose, that he's... At least he's got someone there to, to, to listen to him. Eamon's new relationship counsellor companion is smitten and in love with the presenter. Right! Right, well, I'm just... I'm just happy that he's... He's not alone through these difficult, trying, and challenging times. It's... it's it's nice to hear that he's got someone there counselling him, is what she's doing, isn't it? Like, I, I want to know who's doing Eamon Holmes' PR for him. Because this is ongoing. It's just a, like, peppered little approach. Like, every two or four days, Eamon's trip out with his new love. Eamon's cruise with his new lover. Eamon takes his new lover, 22 years his junior, on a Spanish cruise. Like, how is his wife doing? His wife? I don't think she went on the cruise. Like, whoever it is, it is some top tier disaster recovery reputational management going on here. And frankly, I think if Russell Brand's Christian phase has taught us anything, it's that he needs to engage whoever this PR agency is post haste.
Anyway, elsewhere on Fleet Street this morning, the Daily Express continue to rail against these Labour winter fuel payment changes. I mean, nothing's changed with the actual policy, as far as I'm aware. They're just continuing to batter Labour every single day. Hey, uh, have you heard about the winter fuel payments changes? You have! Oh, well, because we printed it every single day last week. Is that right? And it's the same over at the Daily Mail. Like, literally, nothing has changed. Nothing is developed or deepened with this policy. It's still going to happen. There's still means testing it. We're still being expected to believe that the same Conservative Party who cheered on Boris Johnson after he made the bodies pile high comments and allowed pensioners to freeze on buses. That these guys suddenly care about how on brand blue your granny goes this Christmas. Finally to the sun for the latest developments in the prisons over capacity crisis. They roll with chaos as 2,000 lags are going to go free in 24 hours. And this is, of course, the story that prisons, which have been over capacity for almost a year now, and that the previous Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, was warned about about a week before he called the general election. They were like, it's going to reach breaking point. It's going to reach critical failure, they told him. Well, in order to avoid that total collapse or, you know, overpacking them more to the extent that they would break fire regulations. Well, the new Labour government have been forced to greenlight the release of some of them. And 2,000 of those are going to walk out of prisons tomorrow. <laughs> so that's good. Isn't it? That's really, uh, that's really exciting. Good stuff. I mean, if I was a journalist, right, at The Sun, if I actually wanted to make this a scary, compelling, engaging story, do you know what I would do? I would be going out and hunting photos of the specific lags that are being released tomorrow. You know, because then you make it real. Then you give it a human face. You give it someone to be afraid of. Like, this guy was guilty of sexual assault. He should be serving six years but he's coming out in two, and he'll be returning to your neighbourhood tomorrow. This guy over here tracked down his wife's new lover and violently beat him with a crowbar. He was within an inch of his life in casualty. But he's back out tomorrow. You know what, lads? I think we might have over it on the cancel culture stuff. And look, maybe you're more forgiving than I am, and you think maybe, you know, a couple of years inside is long enough for them to be away from their families, it's long enough for them to reflect and to learn, and as long as they've engaged in therapy, etc., maybe they should be given a second chance, right? Maybe that's you. Maybe you think putting their pictures on the front page of the sun is irresponsible, it's a little bit too mean. Maybe you think that. And all I would say to you is this. If they don't want their faces on the front page of the sun with negative headlines, they're scared about negative PR, negative coverage. All they have to do is call up Eamon Holmes and ask him for the names of his media representation. Hey, yo, Star's alternative paper review. Coming in for you every day is the truth. Roasting the Tories, bring you the stories. A. Thompson talking blue in the room. Dude in the shed, big ears with a brew. Drunk off his head, it appears, had a few. Age 42, saying what's new.